Hey, what's going on guys? It's Hanson. So today I want to show you guys how to get started with setting up DigitalOcean. Now, if you've wanted to run an application or some kind of web app without ever needing to leave your PC on, or let's say you just didn't want to expose your IP address out to the public, then a virtual private server like DigitalOcean is exactly what you need. Now, I've been using DigitalOcean for two years and I have absolutely zero complaints. I love it and they have amazing perks and they have a lot of uh, different products that you can opt into as well. All right, so to get started with DigitalOcean, all you need to do is sign up for an account over at digitalocean.com and you can actually sign up using a referral link. I'm gonna link mine down below in the description. When you sign up using a referral link, you'll receive $100 worth of DigitalOcean credit and you have 60 days to use it. Okay, so this means that once 60 days have passed, if you use all of it, good. If you don't use all of it, let's say you only use $50 worth of the credit, then it's not going to roll over it's going to be gone from your account. Okay, so it's pretty awesome if you want to just, you know, try it out. And if you're a student and if you've signed up for the GitHub Student Developer Pack, okay, you'll see right over here that if you have the GitHub Student Developer Pack, you'll actually get $50 in platform credit. So you get $50 worth of DigitalOcean credit. And this might be better for some people because let's say, for example, if you want something more long term and you only need a $5 a month droplet, which is the cheapest plan, then you'll basically have 10 months of DigitalOcean for free. Okay, now if you're not a student, then I would re recommend you use the referral link down below. So you'll get $100 worth of credit. But like I said, once 60 days have passed, you're not going to get any more. So if you want, you can sign up using the referral link over here. Okay, but in your depending on what your situation is, it might be better to sign up with uh, the student developer pack, the DigitalOcean uh, platform credit that you receive from it. So obviously, in order to sign up for DigitalOcean, you must have a credit or debit card. You can also use PayPal. If you don't have either one of those three things available, then you're not going to be able to sign up for their platform. All right, so once you've signed up for an account, you're going to click on new project on the left hand side. and It's going to bring you this prompt over here and you're just going to type in a and you're just going to type in a name for your project. So I'm going to just type Anton testing uh, project and then give it a description. And then and we're just going to select just trying out DigitalOcean. So now it's going to ask me if I want to move my resources from another project. I'm going to ignore this. So we're going to skip this. And we're, there we go. We're done. From here, we want to go ahead and create a droplet. Okay. So you're just going to click on create droplet or get started with a droplet. So let's just click on that. And we're just going to select Ubuntu. You can select any Linux distribution you want. You can even upload custom images and you can also browse the marketplace for other things. We're just going to stick with Ubuntu version 18.04.3. We're going to go over here and I'm going to select the $5 a month plan. And of course you can select whichever ones you want, but they have a lot of different plans, but select the one that you need. Okay. And you can always resize your, uh, your droplets too. So you don't have to like, you know, destroy your entire droplet and then recreate one. You can always resize it. And you can also add more, uh, block storage if you want. So if you're making an application that requires a lot of uh, storage, such as needing to store a bunch of you know media, then you would probably want to consider having a lot of storage on there. But the five dollar a month plan is pretty good. OK, and like I said earlier, DigitalOcean charges on an hourly rate. So you can see it charges you uh, this much an hour. OK, and for here, we're just going to select, I guess, one for the data center region. It's like whichever one you want. We're just going to leave it alone as one. And you can also select VPC network, but I'm going to leave that alone. And right over here. Okay. So we have authentication. Okay. So basically what we want to do here is we want to make sure we're signing in using SSH rather than having DigitalOcean email us a one-time password because it's much more secure. So now what you need to do is you need to create an actual SSH key. So to do that, you just simply type SSH key gen. Now you need to actually have uh, SS open SSH, I think, on your computer. If you don't have open SSH, if you're on Windows, then you need to use something like PuTTY. So I'll leave a link in the description on where you can download PuTTY. But you basically want to use PuTTY to create uh, SSH keys. But if you're on Windows, the easiest thing to do is just probably install open SSH. Okay, and once you have open SSH, you can actually use the commands. So I'm going to go ahead and just type SSH hyphen keygen, type enter, 
y to overwrite, and I'm going to type in a passphrase, which is kind of like a password. Okay, there we go. So we have our fingerprint, and we have our random art. And now we need to actually copy the, uh, the public key. So I'm going to go into .sh, and then we're going to go to id-rsa.pub. Okay, so if you copy this command over here, if you're on Windows, this the .ssh folder is where your SSH keys are located. So this is going to give me my new SSH key that I just generated. So I'm going to copy that, Control shift c But of course, if you're on Mac or Linux, you don't need to have OpenSSH because Mac and Linux by default already has support for SSH. So I'm just going to click on new SSH key, paste that in. Okay, and you can even see right over here, they give you instructions. So add a public SSH key and then paste it in the space below. And you can just follow these steps on the right. And it's going to tell you to download PuTTY right over here on this website. And it's going to tell you to generate a new public slash private key pair. Okay, and you want to select RSA and then the passphrase and all of these things. But like I said, if you have OpenSSH on your computer, then you can just use that instead. You don't have to worry about PuTTY. All right, so you can see it just generates the private, the public and private key, uh, the passphrase, and then we just do the same thing that they're doing. So I'm just going to call this uh, Anson PC SSH. And we'll just click as SSH key. And there we go. So we're going to leave this as one droplet. We're going to ignore the tags. And we'll just click on create droplet. So this is going to take a couple seconds, not nothing too crazy. Let me just refresh. Should be done in just a couple seconds. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's give it a little bit. And of course, you can always delete your project or destroy your droplet. If you don't want to use it anymore, you can always destroy it. And you can see right up top over here, it's going to tell you your monthly usage. Okay, so now we have our IP address right over here. I'm going to go ahead and try to SSH into my server. So we're going to paste that in SSH root at 192.241.156.4. And we're going to type yes. And I'm going to type in my passphrase. Okay, so. And there we go. We're now inside our droplet. You can see my IP address is right over here. Memory usage, all types of things, which is pretty cool. If I type ls, we can see there, there's nothing in here. If I type the current directory, we're in the root directory. And you can see that I have a bunch of other folders in here. It's basically just like a regular, if you've ever used Ubuntu before, it's basically just like that. Okay. But I'm going to go back into the default folder and that's pretty much it. So now in order for you to actually log into your server, you need to make sure you have the SSH key pasted in there when you create your droplet. Okay. So make sure you generate the key first and then paste it in. All right. So that's pretty much it for setting up DigitalOcean. In the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you guys how to disable root login just to make sure that people can't log in with root. We're also going to create a new account that we're going to SSH into because you don't want to use root. And that's pretty much it for this video. So I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.